guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Idira. For this video, I'm gonna be talking about my symptoms that I experienced during my first trimester. Jose and Jazz are not gonna be included in this video because like I said in my previous one, this is more of like a girl talk video, but don't worry, I do have plenty of vlogs with them. So if you guys are interested in watching any of our vlogs, they come out in all of them. I did write down some notes, that way I don't forget anything. And again, I wanna say thank you so much for all the love and support we have been receiving. Like my little heart is so overwhelmed. I'm like super, super excited. You guys are loving the content and you guys are watching it. So without further ado, let's talk about the first trimester. I just wanna start off by saying that everybody's different. My experience might be completely different from yours. It might be completely different from hers and hers and hers and everybody, okay? So don't think just because my pregnancy has been a certain way, yours is gonna be a certain way. If you are a mom and you are watching this and you already know that, everybody has different pregnancy symptoms. Some people really go through it, some people don't. So I want to share my experience with you guys because my experience with my first pregnancy versus my second one has been completely different. Because I was considered high risk before I even got pregnant. Like she did tell me that because I had preeclampsia with Jasmine, they were going to consider me high risk. And on top of that, my disease makes me high risk in general. This time I was instructed to take a small dosage of aspirin. The aspirin is supposed to help with the blood pressure so it like maintains it down and my blood pressure doesn't spike up like it did with Jasmine. During my first ultrasound, they also found out that I had a hematoma in my placenta. There's another name for it. I'm gonna put it right here, but it's too fancy for me to pronounce. It's basically bleeding in my placenta. I don't really know what causes it to happen. So when they did tell me that, I had already heard about it because one of my girlfriends went through that during her pregnancy too. Some people tell you to bed rest. Some people tell you, no, you can like stay active. They only told me that I can do minimal housework stuff and just to take it easy. And they also said that if I was planning on having sex, as long as I wasn't bleeding, that I would be okay. I was actually really surprised when they told me that I had that because I wasn't experiencing any kind of discomfort or pain or bleeding and they said that I might experience a little bit of bleeding but as long as I wasn't experiencing too much bleeding or too much pain or cramping that I should be okay and they tend to resolve on their own by the time I had my second ultrasound which was around 12 weeks thankfully it went away on its own it was very very little but like I told you guys we've had to go through like this whole little process of being high risk and taking aspirin and you know one thing after another I also started flaring up from my disease a few weeks ago and i'm actually on treatment now things are calming down and i'm just praying and hoping for the best our first goal was to reach 13 weeks which thankfully we surpassed that now our next goal is to reach 26 weeks because my midwife said that you know at 26 weeks babies who are born super premature they can survive we would have a long time in the NICU but the baby would survive I'm hoping I'm praying that we at least get to 33 weeks like we did with Jasmine so let's back up really quick in my first pregnancy with Jasmine I had an amazing pregnancy I didn't have any nauseas I wasn't sleepy like it wasn't anything like that until later on in my pregnancy that's where you know things got really complicated and I developed preeclampsia which I've mentioned a few times but as far as like pregnancy symptoms with jasmine i only had boob soreness the first couple months and back pain and i thought it was because i was working a lot so that's really all i experienced with jazz other than that like everything was i was going to the gym every day i was <laughs> i was uh full-time at school and i was full-time at work like Girl, I was like over here, like I didn't even have a baby in my tummy, okay? Only at nighttime when my back hurt. With this pregnancy, things have been so different already and it's so crazy. By the way, I'm 18 weeks today. Hey. So I found out I was pregnant at four weeks. I had these symptoms from four weeks when I found out up until around six weeks. My boobs usually hurt like a week before my period. So they were a little sore. So I didn't really think much of it. Jose and I went out on a date and I had an alcoholic beverage. And I said this in my other video, like I'm not one to really be like, no, I don't want to drink this. Like I'll order something that I like. And if I, even if I don't like it, I'll, you know, sip on it. But this drink, Girl, let me tell you, I had like two sips of it and I was like super nauseous. Like my whole body just felt icky. I didn't think much of it. I had drank the night before, so I thought maybe I was just a little hungover. And after I found out that I was pregnant, I was like, hell, oh, no wonder you're pregnant, bitch. I was a little bit more sleepy. I didn't have any other symptoms besides that. 
Once I hit my seven weeks though, like something in me just went whoop and it changed. From seven to 13 weeks, they were the hardest for me. My biggest advice is just survive. Do anything you can to survive, whether it's, you know, eating a lot, eating a little, tums, crackers, mints, ginger ale, sleeping. Girl, I was tired all the time. I started having food inversions. I think that's how you say it. Basically, there were certain foods that I couldn't eat no longer. I started getting really nauseous. I was throwing up all the time. I couldn't eat veggies. Like even right now, I'm 18 weeks and I'm slowly introducing veggies again. I could not eat much. I was literally just surviving day by day. And the weirdest thing was happening food had to sound good in order for me to eat it. Like, let's say it was a slice of pizza. I love pizza. If it didn't sound good, I couldn't eat it. Like, I didn't even have to taste it. It just had to sound good, which is so weird because I have never experienced that. And I was like, what is going on? I was mostly able to eat carbs. I like to say carbs because it was mostly bread, soup, crackers, like, stuff that was kind of bland but it was very like carby i had little random cravings which they're really random for me because i have not had a mcdonald's in a long time like in order for us to eat mcdonald's it's because we're like going on a family trip and mcdonald's is the only option i have been craving mcdonald's like crazy every time i go to the doctor i stop by get jasmine her little happy meal <laughs> and then i get myself a mcchicken a mcdouble chicken nuggets and fries and and range and soda so that was super random one of the biggest things is soda i do not drink soda i stopped drinking soda when i was 12 years old it was more of a personal choice that i made but i kind of carried that throughout the years and i just have never really been a fan of soda but one of the things that i randomly crave right now is soda and with jasmine it wasn't soda that i craved it was orange juice and i don't really like juices either like unless it's like a mixed drink or something like i'm not like I'd rather stick to my water. You know how some people like eat their food and they're like chugging a soda while they're eating? Like to me, that just sounds weird. The thought of it, because I know this is not how I am, grosses me out, but I can't stop myself. I don't know if that makes sense. Like just like thinking that I'm like eating McDonald's so often or drinking soda so often, it's kind of weird. And I'm like, oh, it's kind of gross. But at the same time, it tastes really good. My inner self is fighting my pregnant self, basically. In case you didn't know, if you are throwing up a lot or you're not able to eat or keep anything down, you can go to the doctor and they can prescribe medication for you. However, I'm on so much medication just because of my, my disease and stuff. I try to stay away from medicine as much as I can. So I did not want to go that route. So I did message my cuñada because she was also pregnant but she already had her baby. She had a very hard time eating in her pregnancy as well. She actually lost weight just because she was throwing up a lot and she couldn't eat. And I asked her like, hey, what did they tell you? Everything's like grossing me out or it makes my stomach upset. I used to love taking alka -Sessors. If you guys don't know what alka are, they are basically like your cure for a really bad hangover. alka have aspirin and you're not really supposed to take aspirin. I couldn't take alka I just needed something to set on my stomach. And she's like, yeah, you can take tums and she's like try ginger ale and crackers so that's what i did from seven weeks to 13 weeks i literally was drinking ginger ale every day eating crackers every day mints mints really helped me and of course eating small amounts but eating frequently because if you don't eat sometimes that makes you nauseous even though you don't think that's gonna make you nauseous it does it makes you nauseous because you are not eating so in order for you to not to feel as nauseous you need to have something in your system and make sure you feed that baby because that baby needs to grow. You just kind of have to go through the motion and it will pass. It does get a little better. Hopefully some people it doesn't, but hopefully it does get a little better for you. For me, it did. Once I reached 12 weeks, a lot of those symptoms came down. I was no longer super tired. I haven't felt the need to take a nap since I reached 12 weeks. The nausea went away slowly. I wasn't throwing up every single day either. The veggies are still not my favorite thing right now, but I no longer needed, you know, the ginger ale, the mint, and the Tums every day. I still take Tums. Tums are a lifesaver. Like I carry a little pack in my purse because uno nunca sabe, wherever you are, you might need it. So I do carry Tums with me just in case my stomach's upset. I just pop them in. 
and I feel better within 15 minutes. I did start getting a little bit of back pain. The back pain wasn't as intense as it was with Jasmine's, but I do have lower back pain. I was thinking I needed to go to the chiropractor, but so far it's been manageable. So I haven't been to the chiropractor. One of the weirdest symptoms that happened once I hit like my 12 week mark, random stomach spasms. I never experienced that with Jasmine. So it really, really freaked me out. It almost felt like I got electrocuted um just like a little certain area of my stomach and it like literally just makes you like jump back and like whoa you know i still get that once in a while but not as much as i was getting it when i hit 12 weeks it freaked me out because i'm like oh my god like is there something going on like are, are these braxton hicks like is it too early for braxton hicks what is going on no it, it scares me because i am considered high risk i'm very very in tune with my body that i just get very nervous <laughs> Shit out of me. I'm very very in tune with my body that any little movement any little spasm I feel it and I'm like Ooh, something's wrong what is wrong I did call my midwife and I asked her and she's like no that's completely normal they're not Braxton Hicks they're basically just stomach spasms since your stomach is relaxing the muscle that holds your stomach walls are relaxing you know you'll feel them once in a while like once you get Braxton Hicks those are more like a contraction feeling throughout your whole stomach but since mine was just like a little section like this it wasn't anything to worry about and she said that was pretty normal and pretty common so i was like whoo so yeah guys so that's kind of how my first trimester has been and it you know my biggest advice like i said is just survive do anything you can to survive because you feel like shit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Let me know how your guys' pregnancy went or is going if you are pregnant. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. I love you guys and I'll talk to you guys next time.